multi-mesh instability analysis using a classical model. So far we are studying the transient stability for a generator which is connected to infinite bus without any load connected to it. But in an actual case in the power system there will be a large number of generators and the loads buses are there. There are basically two methods to representing the load buses. One is using the the Y bus and the other one is the constant admittance. It is it is just a for, for representing the, the load. Our main focus in this study is as to find out the signal stability of the overall power system with the objective is to calculate the generator current only in order to find out the, the pre-fault or pre-transient induced EMF behind the transient reactance and individual machines. That is the analysis is that is we know in the case of uh, uh, symmetrical force then there is a variation of the reactance in the three different pairs that is subtransient, transient and static condition. Here under the such a transient conditions once again you have to represent the voltage behind the transient reactance for the analysis purpose. These voltages are required to find out the what is the power transfer between the machines that is the before the fault, under the fault condition and the post fault condition. Okay. And the equal area criteria it is cannot be applied to the, the multi machine system. That is we are having a lot of difficulties to solve the, the swing equation for simple the generator which is connected to infinite bus. That is we know that in the, the large power system there are a number of load buses at the generator. In that case the complexity of the numerical computation increases with the number of machines considered in the transient stability studies because the number of buses and the generators they are increasing in that case the numerical the solution computations has got the increased complexity. When a multi person system operates under electromechanical transient condition the inter machine oscillation occurs between the, the machine through the medium of the transmission system which con connects them. That is, if there is any the disturbance in the multi machine system, in that case there is a electromechanical transient conditions where there is an inter machine oscillations. It is not only the single machine which is the there is an oscillation, it is a multi machine because it is consists of number of generators and the loads. In, in the system any one of the machine if it is considered to act alone as a single oscillating source. If any disturbance occurs even in the one single machine in the system, it would send into the interconnected system an electromagnetical oscillations determined by its inertia and signalizing power. Means even though there is a disturbance in a single machine that is propagating to the other the, the machines through the interconnected system. This uh, typical frequency of such oscillation is in the order of 1 to 2 hertz and this is superimposed on the our normal frequency of 50 hertz. Then the many machines rotors are simultaneously undergoing transient oscillation because there is a propagation of the oscillation from one system one machine to the other machine the swing curves will reflect the combined presence of many such oscillations. In that case, the each machine will start oscillating. Therefore, the transmission system frequency is not unduly perturbed from the nominal frequency because that is propagated to all the machines and the disturbance in the frequency is not much. Therefore, the unduly perturbed from the nominal frequency 
the assumption is made that the 50 hertz network parameters are still applicable that is still we are assuming that the frequency is the 50 hertz only we know that there is a lot of complexity because of in the multi machine system in that case the system modeling we have to make some assumptions make it the the computation simple due to complexity of the system modeling and thereby the computation burden the following the additional assumptions are commonly made in the transient stability these assumptions are the mechanical power input to the machine remains the constant during the entire period of string curve computation damping power is negligible each machine may be represented by a constant transient reactance in series with constant transient internal voltage that is the voltage bent the transient reactance the mechanical rotor of each machine coincides with delta and the electrical phase angle of the transient internal voltage and all the loads may be considered as a sent impedances all the loads are considered as sent impedances to ground with the values determined by condition prevailing immediately prior to the transient condition before there is a transient condition what is the you have to represent the load with this assumptions if you are making a model that model what you are calling is classical stability model the same thing is written here the system stability model based on these assumptions is called the classical stability model and studies which use this model are called classical stability studies if you are using this assumptions and you are incorporating in the modeling of the the overall power system with making this assumptions then the model is become classical stability model if you are analyzing using, using this classical stability model then it is called as a classical stability studies of the power system stability then in any transient stability study the system conditions before the fault and the network configuration during the and after the the occurrence must be known that is we know the what is the free fault conditions what is the power transmitted what is the the reactance offered at that particular point and during the fault what is the power transmitted and what should be the change in the reactance and after the fault post fault condition what is the power transmitted we must know the the conditions of pre fault during the fault and the post fault condition consequently the multi machine case two preliminary steps are required that is it is involved with two steps here one is steady state pre fault condition for the system are calculated using production type load flow program that is that is before the fault occurs that is a condition what we are calling is steady state condition that is pre fault condition there you have to make the load flow studies you have to find out the what is the load angles what is the active power what is the reactive power what is the the load angles at the different buses what is the voltage profile using the load flow studies and second one is the pre fault network representation is determined and then modified to account for the fault and for the post fault condition then once the the steady state conditions as calculated we know the all the conditions all the the parameters of the circuit then accordingly the depending upon the the condition that is the during the fault at the after the fault you have to modify our the overall power system for during the fault and the after the fault is clear from the first preliminary steps that is the load flow studies we know that values for the power reactive power voltage at each generator terminal voltage the same thing i told you that is generator terminal and load bus which are all angles measured with respect to the swing bus the transient internal voltage of each machine or each generator is then calculated using the equation that is it is a well known equation that is the voltage behind the the reactance e dash is equal to the terminal voltage plus jxt dash by r it is for the the transient condition 
where Vt is the, the corresponding terminal voltage and voltage and current I the output current and the I is the, the output current. Then the while that is the, the admittance is given by PL minus JQL by VL square. It is a load point. It is at the load point. The same thing I am containing where in the here that is each load is converted into a constant admittance to ground and is bus using the equation. I told you that is a representation of the system in two way. One is the admittance and the another one is the while that is a while is equal to PL minus JQL by VL square. Where PL plus JQL is the load and is the and is the magnitude of the corresponding bus, bus voltage. The bus admittance matrix used for the preferred load flow calculation is augmented to include the, the transient reactance of each generator and sent load admittances. While calculating the preferred load flow calculations that is augmented with include the transient reactance of each generator with the sent load admittance that you have to take care of. That is along with the reactance you have to take the, the admittance of the, the load also. Note that the injected current is zero at all buses except the, the three generator internal buses. The second preliminary step determines the modified bus admittance. You have to modify the bus admittance because during the fault the admittance will be changed because of the load conditions, uh, because of the fault conditions and after the, the fault also, after the fault is cleared it is admittance also that is you have to modify the, the network based on the, the condition during the fault and after the, the fault is cleared and the post fault conditions. Since the only the generator internal buses have injections. That is only the generator or injecting the power and all other buses can be eliminated to reduce the dimensions of the, the modified the matrices to corresponding to number of generators. That is the only the injections is by the generator the other can be the eliminated other buses can be eliminated. During and after the fault the power flow into the network from each generator is calculated by the corresponding power angle equation. That is the, this is the equation for the, the given network here consists of three generators with the two the loads which is connected at the terminal bus 4 and 5 then here the three buses having E1, E2 and E3 that is the voltage behind the sub transient, uh, transient reactance of XD1, XD2 and XD3 of 3 the generator then the power injection the PE is given by it is E1 square that is it is the conductance GNN plus E1, E2 that is between E1 and E2 Y1 to cos delta 1 to minus theta 1 to plus E1 dash into E3 dash between the first and third then it is Y13 cos delta 13 minus theta 13 where the delta 1 to equals is nothing but it is the difference between the angle the load angle between the bus number 1 and bus number 2. Similarly equations are written for PE2 also. Say in the similar fashion you can write PE2 and PE3. That is in that case it is E2 square it is Z2 2 and once again it is instead of E1 dash by E2 dash it is E2 dash into E1 dash. Like that you have to write the, the power injection from the two generation uh, two generators that is PE1, PE2 and PE3. The power equation for the part that is what you are interested here is you have to find out in the multi machine system what is the, the accelerating power. Ultimately what is the disturbance cost then how if there is an imbalance between the input and output then what should be the accelerating power in the system. For knowing the accelerating power then we know the what is the, the power output what is the power input that is the total mechanical input and electrical the output difference of these two what you are calling is accelerating power in the case of multi machine system. 
Therefore, the swing equation for multi-machine system it is generalized as 2HI divided by omega s into d square delta by dd square. This is nothing but your m d square delta by. This is whole thing is the m m d square delta by dt square is equal to that is the PA that is the accelerating power that is PMI is the total mechanical power input the set of generators and minus PEI it is a set of that is the, the output of the, the generators in the electrical power. Then if you are solving this the multi machine system for I is equal to 1 to the number of generator which is connected here it is taken 3 buses therefore it is taken I is equal to 1, 2 and 3. To represent the motion of each rotor for the fault and the post fault periods, the, the solution depends upon the, the location and duration of the, the fault and the Y bus which results when the fault line is removed. That is the, the swing equations, the solution of the swing equation is that depending upon the duration of the, the fault, it is sustained and the bus is, uh, that is the fault is cleared and also it is depending upon the Y bus which results when the fault is the remote. This is how we have to analyze the multi machine the stability studies using the, the classical model. Now some of the, the factors which are influencing the, the transient stability, just I am listing out here. The generator inertia, the higher the inertia, the lower is the rate of change of angle. This reduces the kinetic energy gained during the, the fault. This is one of the, the factor which is influencing the, the transient stability of the system. That is generator inertia, that is the first point. That is higher the inertia, the lower is the rate of change in angle. The generator reactors, that is second in the important the factor which is affecting is generator reactance. That is a lower reactance increases the peak power because we know that the peak power that is P max is equal to Ev by X. If the X is less, your P max will be more. That is a lower the reactance increases the peak power and reduces the initial rotor and Then the next the point is the generator internal voltage magnitude that is E naught that is this depends on the, the field excitation that is the generated internal voltage is depending upon the, the excitation. Then also it is depending upon the how heavily the generator is loaded it is depending upon the loading of the, the machine also that is the transient stability uh, effecting. The generator output during the fault this depends upon the, the fault location and the time. That is the generator output during the fault is depending upon where exactly the fault is occurs up to the fault point what is the reactance. And the importantly the, the, the another important point which is affecting the transient stability is fault clearing time. You have to clear the fault so that your delta should not cross beyond DCR. Therefore the corresponding time is what we are calling is critical clearing time that is a TCR we are calling. And lastly the post fault transmission system reactance. The before the fault it is also depending upon the what is the fault before the uh, react uh, before the the fault occurs what is the system reactance. These are the some of the factors which affect in the, the transient stability.